Minister, I want to first of all welcome the phased reopening of schools and echo the call of many that this is done in a safe way with adherence to public uh, health advice to ensure the safety of the whole school community, so pupils, staff and indeed parents and other family members. But school is an essential service, so I am asking you, will you advocate priority vaccination for school staff? There is naturally some anxiety among pupils and staff returning to school when case numbers are still high, so a robust testing and tracing um, service is needed in schools. So what measures have been put in place to ensure this, and is there a possibility of introducing a type of rapid testing? Now, school closure last year for three months, and this year since Christmas, has been extremely damaging for students of all ages, and obviously has affected some more than others. But students need to be in school, not just for the academic element of school, but for the social interaction with their peers. And I'm hearing worrying reports from schools in relation to the high number of referrals being made to CAMS for students who have no prior history of mental health issues. Now, a serious effort must be made to put supports in place for students returning to school to help them to settle back in and deal with the effect that the closure has had over the last number of months. Now, leaving Sir students have returned to school from Monday, and many are opting to sit their exams if safe to do so. However, schools have not been given an updated list of due dates for project work or oral exams. So I'm just wondering what the delay is in providing this information to schools. This should be done immediately instead of having students and teachers working in a vacuum. I mean, you know, even orals could have been done through the Zoom uh, medium. So I'm just wondering what the hold-up is on, on this issue. I also welcome the fact that older and, and vulnerable members of staff are not obliged to return to school if they're concerned concerned about their health. However, this causes another problem, like who is going to replace members of staff. It was very difficult for schools to find substitute teachers prior to Christmas, so it's going to be practically impossible to do so now. So what provisions, Minister, have you put in place to fill this gap? And in fact, what efforts are you making to encourage more young people to enter the teaching profession? The shortage of substitute teachers is nothing new. It has existed for a number of years across a range of subjects. So addressing the pay differential between those who joined the teaching profession since 2011 would be one way. Um, pay, uh, pay equity has to be restored. I also know the allocation of SNAs was frozen last year so that no school was left with less than they had the previous year. So is that intended to continue uh, again this year? But I'm worried if schools require additional SNAs, that there should be a straightforward process for doing so and not the threat that the whole school provision will be refuted. There has also been much discussion about the return to education for students with additional educational needs, and I do welcome the fact that special schools or special classes and units opened at long last in recent weeks. But there is a cohort of students whom I'm very concerned about, and that's the students with additional educational needs but who are in a mainstream setting. Those students have been left behind, and Minister, I would like to know what additional supports have been put in place to help those students who have been unable in many cases to learn independently at home through the online system. And can children with SEN not be allowed to return to school where they can access online classes with the assistance of an SNA in the school, instead of a teacher coming to the child's home in the evening to do work under the supplementary revision programme when the child is too tired to do the work? I would also like to point out an anomaly between the teacher and SNA to pupil ratios in special classes with that of ASD units. The one to eight in a special class for children with moderate general learning disabilities with 0.5 of an SNA as compared to one to six in a unit with um, two SNAs. So can this be addressed as well? And I know there is an increase in the number of ASD units provided um, in the last number of years, but there are still not enough places for all of those who seek them. And many children are forced to travel far away from their own areas to access an ASD unit. Thank you. Only a minute left, I'm afraid. Um, Antara, Antara, Storch. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, for, you, you had a number of different questions there. Uh, just around the, 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 the front-loaded allocation model in relation to SNAs, um, it had been planned that this would have been uh, rolled out to all schools from the commencement of the 2021 school year. But however, due to the disruption that is caused by COVID-19 and, of course, the closure of school buildings uh, in March 2020, it was decided that the introduction of the model would be deferred. Uh, and this will obviously allow time for the necessary planning um, and training for schools. Um, so just to mention that to you as well. Um, supplementary provision and, and the summer provision are obviously going to be of assistance uh, to children with special needs. Um, and it, it, we're, we're doing everything we can to try uh, and ensure that the supplementary provision uh, may be well provided in schools. We're having on, an ongoing conversation with our education partners around that. It has been extended for post-primary students and not 
yet back at school um, by two weeks and also to third and si to third to sixth classes also. Um, and you mentioned around a ASD classes in schools uh, as well, and we'll have 100 112 additional uh, special class places in 2021 from Margaret.